Oh my gosh, what a day. What a day. I I did the American equivalent today of like going to the DMV for four hours. Except it was much higher stakes and much more worrisome. But that's over things more or less worked out. Uh but it just zapped up the whole day. So I've just a little bit of time before I have to basically go get my son and launch into dad mode and try to get one video recorded for the day. Um and the deck I'm playing is sweet. It's one that I've been looking forward to playing. This is the Ali Entrazi Jeskaya's Kanta list. And this is exactly the type of list that I foresaw Jeskaya's Kanta being good in. The one thing that I thought about changing, and I kind of didn't want to change his list, uh, but I was kind of tempted to turn one of these Supreme Verdicts or even like a random counter spell or something into a... Um, Sphinx's Revelation, just because I feel like um, if you're going to have Search for Ezkanta, if you're not quite stabilized and you just need to drag yourself back into the game, Sphinx's Revelation can do that. You can tutor it up. Obviously, sometimes you're going to want to secure the waste instead, but I like having the, okay, I'm in a good position. I'm going to make a bunch of tokens and kill you, or I'm not in a good position. I'm going to buy time, get a bunch of cards, and then probably kill you. Um, so that's the only thing I would want to try differently but I don't want to change anything because I'm sure he considered it and he has his reasons the one thing to consider is that you can't flash it back with torrential gear hulk but then again you can't flash back secure the waste either so um, the one the, the other thing I'm like not too sure on is obviously one snapcaster mage is just weird to me I'm like come on surely we have to have at least like two or three snaps but I guess he feels like his, his Ascant is basically doing a snapcaster mage impression alright I don't know exactly where I was <laughs> my I got interrupted so I think I was talking about how I didn't want to change the deck but I wanted to sphinx his revelation and um, I still kind of want to sphinx his revelation but I'm going to play the list as it is and see if that's something that I feel like I like I really need. I do want to. I'm just maybe I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna put one anyway. It's just like as Kanta to find the rev when you want it. The nice thing is, like if you didn't need the rev, you can always just pick something else and then eventually like shuffle and get it. You know, tutor for the rev again later at some point. Um. Yeah. All right, I was about to change it. I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to leave it because I also like want to try Glimmer of Genius with Torrential Gear Hulk. Let's just run what Allie did, or what Allie ran. Uh, outside of that, you know, it's pretty standard like Jess Kydra, go Control List, bunch of removal, a little bit of card advantage, a lot more card advantage. Glimmer of Genius, I have to tell you guys, like, I, I tried this in some testing games in Jess Kai Midrange just to see how it would work out. And I don't think it's what that deck wants, but there, it is really awesome. It makes your cryptic commands great because normally if you don't do anything with cryptic command, you don't always, like if you're holding up cryptic command and they don't do anything, you don't always have something to do. In fact, there's even times when you're like, well, maybe I'll just bounce this thing and draw a card just so I can, you know, keep up the card velocity and cantrip through my deck. I'm not saying you do it, but these are the things you consider. Glimmer of Genius is like, okay, you're not going to do anything. I'm not going to cryptic. How about I scry to draw to? But you got to realize, like, just a generic draw to isn't sometimes I almost think of it as a draw one only because the card that you're drawing is just replacing itself so you're seeing two extra cards but you're only getting one extra card scrying two first is a whole lot better now we're talking about um, card selection combined with card advantage all in one card all at instant speed and so that scry two a glimmer of genius is almost like a draw three and maybe can be a little bit more because if you just put like let's say you're not looking for lands you scry two you see two lands you just went down four cards in your library for four mana um and so i think glimmer of genius i've thought for a while that it's more powerful than it seems on the surface and it's really exactly what a drago control deck wants it's card selection and card advantage at instant speed um, 
and it's flashable. You can flash it back with Torrential Gear Hulk. I don't know how Ollie would optimize this list. I haven't reached out for out to him. I would imagine that you probably want like another Snapcaster Mage and I don't know, it'd be nice to get a Sphinx's Revelation. Maybe you don't need all three verdicts in the main. Um But let's just get into some games and see how it works out. Alright, we won the die roll. We do want to play first. Land and spells. Uh huh. That's a lot of land and spells. Maybe too many lands and spells. I'll keep it. <laughs> I guess there's some chance that I can cast to secure the ways for just a few as a as a removal spell. All right, well we don't we don't have a lot for you to take. I'm assuming you're maybe actually it's probably not Jund. It's either Jund or it's the new Mardu deck. All right, takes our secure. There's a glimmer. Okay. Uh, so let's pretend that it's the Mardu deck and they might have main deck Blood Moons. And let's play this Flooded Strand so that we can fetch a white if we think we need to. Aha, you missed and we're getting, all we need is two more turns and we get to Glimmer. No land from him. Uh, oh, I'm not going to fetch just yet. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and fetch basics. I'm probably being a little too cautious, but I feel like there's not really a huge downside to us doing so. So, two mana here for a Bob, maybe? Two black for... Alright, well, our hand does less. Discard a Lingering Souls. Yeah, this feels like... I'm going to get basics. This does feel to me like Lingering Souls, Collective Brutality. It's definitely that Mardu deck are very likely to be. So let's go ahead and... Well, the thing is I, I want a Desolate Lighthouse, though. Um, all right, I lied. I'm going to get a Steam Vents, and then I'm going to get a, a Swamp. I mean, a, not a Swamp, an Island. And... Yeah, let's play the lighthouse. So electrolyze would be a good way to deal with the slingering souls. Um, one thing I want to keep in mind, like as I'm playing as this as the control player, is I'm not. I'm just not. I want the game to go long. I'm not trying to. I'm looking for spells to help prolong the game. Um, Yeah, and that's pretty much it. We have our six mana here for a. Hopefully, we can, I, I I will definitely get use out of this mana leak if we can't. Yeah, that seems like a ideal target for mana leak. Okay, we might be doing it. I am certainly not going to activate this. Well, I guess I could activate the lighthouse. Um, I'm just going to discard what I don't want. And if it's a... Ha ha ha! So happy! Whiff, sir. Whiff a -roo. And we are going to Torrential Gear Hulk you. Yeah, I think we can activate anyway. Oh yeah, we'll just discard this thing twice, which we'll act... We'll it later. Um, I guess I don't need to show him that I drew a Glacial Fortress. I can just play this. I am so excited. We are about to Torrential Gear Hulk into Glimmer of Genius. Already. Already the magic's happening. I don't even... I mean, he's probably going to kill this, but whatever. Four, five, six. Oh, how sweet. Oh my gosh. I can't handle it. I can't handle the sweetness. Target, cast this. Now here's where we get to. We're gonna. We're probably gonna see some lands. We're gonna shove them all to the bottom. We don't need lands at this point. You're casting, right? The stack. It's on the stack. Okay. Put bottom. Put top. 
<laughs> we drew a cryptic command. That's fine, man. We drew a cryptic command, and we drew an electrolyze, and we have a thing twice in the graveyard. This is out of control. Uh, I'm going to get this Arid Mesa just because it does let us get a basic planes in case we want to like play around Blood Moon. So now we have a cryptic up. Um, if you flash this back, this Lingering Souls, we have an Electrolyze. We can cast, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, we cast everything. I expect to dominate at this from this point on. Absolutely dominate. Yeah, that's getting that's getting dominated. <laughs> Let's counter draw. Domination. And let's dominate some lingering souls here. I mean, our opponent did like miss land drops for a while, but still, domination. Oh, it, oh my gosh, and we get to search, and we got a removal spell, and we get to get Elias basic? Whew. And then we're like pretty Blood Moon protected. Oh my gosh. It's too much. It's too much for me. I just can't handle it all. Oh, and I still get to think twice. Uh, sure. Well, let's think twice first. Uh, I'll just guard this land, I think. And then just punch Liliana in the face, I suppose. He's got no cards in hand. And put Celestial Colonnade into the graveyard. I don't think so. No. Yes, I will transform. We are so doing it. Okay, let's activate this colonnade. Two, three, four. I guess I'll just do this guy. And then once yeah, I can't I can also activate the Ascanta. This game is so like I don't even need to win anytime soon, but this our opponent is dead. Like whether he realizes it I mean, he probably realizes it, but uh, just doing this every turn in a Jeskai control deck. I didn't say this during the deck tech, but one of the things about Jeskai, outside of Torrential Gear Hulk, we can just get everything. We can find our win cons, we can find Nahiri, and honestly, like, even getting a Torrential Gear Hulk with Nahiri seems totally fine to me because you're already. Um, sure. I just want to activate this and see what I can see. Um, probably just take this Glimmer of Genius, I'm thinking. Play the land, pass the turn. I'm not going to do anything yet, we'll just kind of hang out here. I'm not too worried about the 2 damage. Um, so let's glimmer. There's the electrolyze and a logic knot. I'll actually take both of those. I think I was saying something. Um, I don't remember what it was. I guess I could start ending the game. I guess I can I can also wait. Opponent has two cards in hand. He said sweet list. I'd have to agree with him. 
Thoughtseize. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. It probably takes the Crypt command, but I'm really not that worried about it. Oh, I know. I was talking about Nahiri. So even if we tick up Nahiri, like, so you plus up Nahiri, you play Nahiri at four lands, you plus Nahiri, you're going to find more lands. Um, you're gonna find you're gonna find more lands with Nahiri, so you're probably gonna be at six mana. So then, when you ult, if you want to ultimate Nahiri at some point, you're gonna get a torrential gear hulk, gear, gear hulk, which could get back a number of things, and of course, it returns to your hand. But it's not like you can't cast it. In fact, returning it to your hand is fine because then you just get to cast it again. I just said not mine, but I agree. Um, all right, so against this deck, um, so let's bring this in for Engineered Explosives. I mean, for Lingering Souls. This is good against Lingering Souls. This is good in a grindy matchup. I think Celestial Purge is good because it kills Bedlam Revelers. Um, it kills Bedlam Revelers and it kills Blood Moons. Uh, let's see here. I don't know that we want Soulfire Grandmaster. I think we're bringing in two Celestial Purge. <coughs> well, excuse me, on top of our counter spells. Um, I don't know that we need uh, Wear Tear. I think I can trim the bolts because I think we're we're multi. You know, Lingering Souls. We just kind of want to wrath away Young Pyromancer. We do would like to kill if it gets out of control. Uh, maybe that's an argument to leave in the bolts mainly for Young Pyromancer, or at least some. Let's see, what do we want to cut? Uh, I think I'm going to... The leaks aren't bad. Snapcaster Mage, think twice. I want all the value stuff. I think I can cut the leaks. I think it's probably more important to just have more removal. So what did we bring in? Uh, brought in, and is it Staticaster? So I'm like... I'd rather have a static caster than a leak. I'd rather have a engineered explosive than a leak. So those does kind of seem, seem like two good trades there. Then I have some early bolts for things like Young Pyromancer. Uh, and then I just have a bunch of card advantage stuff. I think this seems fine. Okay, let's submit this. My lighting doesn't look too great though. Whatever. It's good enough. Oh, it's too bright. I don't want to mess the exposure up or mess with the exposure. Uh, I guess the one thing we do want to keep in mind is Blood Moon. I'm going to keep this hand looking for lands, but we get, we're get we on the draw, so we get a stab at another land. Hand disruption begins immediately. If he takes the Celestial Purge, that's a telltale sign of Blood Moon. If he takes the logic knot, it's not necessarily so, but it looks like he may have mulligan down to five. He asked me if it won something. I just said it's an alley and trazy list from an SCG event. I don't think it won, but it looked sweet. Um, yeah, so let's see what we can learn by what he takes. I think the thing to do is obviously lead on the Arid Mesa. And probably not, if we don't draw either way, probably if we don't need to crack. Um, well, we might want to crack because we have the Sulphur Falls coming into play. So it took the logic knot. All right, glacial fortress is good. We definitely are gonna have to crack this though for an island, just so that the rest of our lands don't come into play untapped and awkward. Uh, 
All right, Inquisition. Now, if he goes and takes the Celestial Purge, I'll be a little bit worried about a Blood Moon. Especially if he's just avoiding the Snapcaster Mage. I think what I might do... Yeah, all right. I'm, like, sniffing. I'm smelling Blood Moon big time. Uh, I'm not going to fetch. Okay. That's a good start. So we can get planes, we can get island. That would allow us at some point to cast a purge. Alright, we're getting bolted. Opponent's on two cards. Uh, he's probably got a Bedlam Reveler in his hand. That could also be what he's holding on to the... Um, this is enough, right? Cast a not creator. Oh, my friend played this. We're gonna. We're just going to bolt this. Um... We're going to go ahead and do what we said and just kind of insulate ourselves from Blood Moon as best we can. Let's go ahead and play the Sulphur Falls and uh, I don't see a reason to react on, like to do it on our turn necessarily. I'm going to bolt now. I don't want to take four just because okay cryptics online and I feel like we got this game on lock opponent had to discard doesn't I'm not sure if he had any threats but one card I'm not even opposed to starting to get a little aggressive like let's see what he does here but if he just is he like played a land and said go he probably just has a removal spell I'm not opposed to just like snap bolting yeah I'm gonna do that I guess two cards in hand. Yeah, I mean, we're sitting on these cryptic commands now. I'm going to guess he's got like fatal pushes or something. But it, this is like allowing us to kind of like do something while we sit on these. And the, they should protect us pretty well from anything that we're majorly afraid of, I think. Guessing that's going to name Colonnade. I'm just going to let it. I don't think I need Colonnades to win this game. And uh, I could always bounce it with a Crypt Command at some point if I needed to. So there's the Blood Moon. Counter draw. Bolt my opponent. Untap. Attack. Opponent has one card in hand. We have plenty of cards in the graveyard. And we do just we drew a logic knot, so I'll go ahead and play the search. And if he has another Blood Moon, I mean we have a logic knot. He has one card in hand. But yeah, so we'll just counter this. Unless he pays one. And put Steam Vents into the graveyard. No. Yes. Okay. <sighs> Uh, let me bring the deck back up. List felt pretty sweet there. Um, granted, I guess the first game our opponent kind of stumbled a bit, but how awesome is Torrential Gear Hulk and Glimmer of Genius? How awesome was Glimmer of Genius? I mean, just kind of drew everything we needed to off of it. Just, just instant speed, look at stuff, scry, whatever. Um, I've, you know, I've, I'd been wanting to play around with glimmer of genius some more and i was super happy to see ali and Trazi run it and I, th I think i just recently posted in the esper control forums kind of like giving my two cents about how good i thought this card is um, i think if you're a crypt command deck you want to find room for them it's just 
it, it adds almost a new dimension to the deck because sometimes, not all the time, but, but at four mana, if your opponent was like, I didn't do anything, if they, your opponent just didn't do anything and you had a cryptic command in hand, didn't necessarily punish them. But in, but scry two, draw two at instant speed in a control deck is a huge punishment. Um, you're just further getting behind in the battle of resources. Okay, that's going to do it for round one of this week's Competitive Modern League. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you guys tomorrow for round two. Bye for now.